Dot, a title given to the person who looks after your health. But it's also possible to earn this title by getting the highest level of education in a field, a doctorate or a PhD. And what field did I get my degree in? Don't worry about me. Me and my peers vouch for one another. But we're not talking about me. I know, a shame really. Today, let's talk about another doctor in game. Dr. Mudo for the GameCube. So, who is this doctor? The first cutscene we get is Dr. Mudo sleeping and dreaming about certain parts of his life, which tell us that he was the stereotypical mad scientist loser. He also dreams of being selected to solve the energy crisis this planet is suffering from caused by the burn it all industry. You get it? You get it? You get it? Burn it all? Burn it all? Burn it all? Not a bad pun! Not a bad pun! Not a bad pun! Instead of solving the energy crisis though, he causes the planet to explode! And Mudo wakes up from his dream. Or nightmare. Probably the nightmare. However, it was never a dream, and the planet did blow up. Anyways, Mudo decides to bring the planet back by stealing parts for the Generator 9000 from Bernardo Empire's four main planets. So, let me get this straight. He blows up the planet, takes a nap, forgets about it, and then decides to fix it by stealing parts from some other guy? This guy is... A genius. He has to be part of my crew. Hold on. Let me talk to one of them right now. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, uh. Hey, what's up, Dr. Dre? Now, let's talk about introductory levels. Usually when you start a game, mostly platformers, they give you this area to get accustomed to the controls. The most famous and used example is Super Mario 64. When you start the game, you are put outside the castle and can mess around however you like. Move around, get a feel for the jump height, figure out how to long jump or triple jump. Even Banjo Kazooie did this with Spiral Mountain and took it a step further by giving the player incentives to use these new controls. Dr. Muro does this as well by putting you in his house collecting isotopes without any enemies or hazards. But they added a timer. Come on game, you almost had it! Now I have to learn to get used to these controls as fast as I can. It's not that big a deal anyway, since they give you enough time to complete it. But that timer is a dick move. It's a dick move guys. There are four main worlds in the game, and the worlds are okay. There are these huge stages that are two or three smaller stages connected together, to make it into this one huge world. Every world looks dreary, just like you expect an evil corporation to make them. Lots of pollution, dull colors, tons of machines and pipes. It even has propaganda of the main villain around some stages. But that's about it. The only time you ever see or hear anything about the main villain is at the beginning of the game, this guy, and at the end of the game. Platforming is okay as well? Dr. Muro feels a little bit too slippery for my taste. But the game has a double and a hover jump to compensate for this. Which is nice because the game has some very tight, too tight platforming. They give you these jumps that feel like you're not supposed to do. And if you were one pixel off, you would never have made it. At least there's no lives. When you die, the game puts you in the nearest checkpoint. And if you collect something or activate a switch and die, you don't have to do it again. Greatly appreciated, since you will die a lot with these platform challenges. They even do this cool thing where they spawn you next to enemies all the time. Nice! The game has four types of enemies. The big guys that take two hits to destroy. Yeah, this guy takes forever with only two hits though. The smaller ones who only take one hit. The one that can only be destroyed by crashing to the wall. I hate these. And the DNA monster. The unique thing about this game is that Muro has to capture certain monsters to take their DNA with his blizz gun. There's a dirty joke in there somewhere, I just, I just don't know where. Once you capture a certain amount of the required monsters, you can transform to the new monster on the fly. To advance in certain parts of the game, you have to unlock a certain transformation. Each transformation has sections where they're used and they're okay. Some of them are fun to use, like the squirrel and the mouse. But the other two have caused some of the most frustrating moments I've ever had in a single player game. Why the fuck can I not make this leap? 
It's a ledge leap. Just swing and go. What kind of bullshit timing am I supposed to have for this? And then we have the spider transformation. The least enjoyable transformation was the way this camera moves when moving around. I actually went backwards in the stage with how confused I became with the camera trying to follow me as I move up and down in all types of fucking directions. There's also an odd way to control Dr. Mudo. You can control him by strafing. You know that thing they put in shooters? This isn't a shooter. Now I'm having second thoughts about you, Dr. Mudo. Come on. How about, let me, let me call one of my guys who knows more about this than I do. Hey, I know you're busy, but you think I could get your opinion on this? Dr. Mario! It's weird that they have strafing since the range of your attack is only a couple of feet in front of you. So strafing was completely useless for me. There's also a first person mode, mainly used for the rocket. Besides the transformation, you could use these items that you collect parts of throughout the game, which I thought was cool. They give you these items that you can use to make certain parts of the game easier and collect more stuff, which rewards you for exploring and finding all the pieces. It's what I want to say, but I'll get back to this later. The bosses in this game suck. There are four bosses and not one of them is interesting. For a game that lets you transform to different monsters, you will think they will have bosses that made you use two or more transformations in some platforming. Nope, only one transformation for each. And one of them is the turret section. None of them are memorable. They have a cutscene where you defeat them, which are supposed to be funny. But this game's comedy sucks. I know, comedy is subjective and everybody laughs at different things. But this game sucks at humor. In my opinion at least. Besides the cutscenes, the only other comedic bits you get are from your AI partner, Al. Uh, whatever. I think it's Al. Forgot to write his name. That helps you along the game. He is the sassy AI butler with the dry humor. That is so dry, there's no humor. Did you just make a sperm joke? Oh shit, this game is rated T for teen? Huh. The final boss is this guy obviously, and you have to fight him as the spider. And only the spider. This is probably the worst way to have a last battle. I had more trouble keeping my orientation controlling the camera to keep track of him than actually fighting him. It ends with the guy knowing Mudo somehow, I don't, they don't explain, and escaping. But his rocket is hacked and blown up by Mudo's AI. Returning back to the house to put the last piece on the generator 9000. And the game then tells me I'm not done. I have to go back and collect more Terra and isotopes. So far, I've only collected about half of the current amount I need. So all those things I thought were side missions or extra that the game lets you skip by are basically mandatory. Which means that unless you collect everything in sight, even the ones annoying to get, you gotta go do that. That part you tried 20 times but failed, go back. No one likes to backtrack and this game forces you to do that. I already beat the final boss. Why do I have to do more to just beat the game? In the end, it's not even worth it. You get a cutscene with the Earth coming back and Moodle messing with chemicals and that's it. That's it. My diagnosis of this game is that it's okay but not worth it. It's pretty hard to recommend you play a game that is okay with pretty bad storytelling. I did some research and supposedly the main villain sabotage Moodle's machine to solve the energy crisis at the beginning. But I have no idea what the game tells you about this. Even if you do play, you have to do so much just to get the ending that's not worth it. I'm sorry Dr. Muro, but you can't be part of my doc squad, man. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's from Dr. Muro. He's trying to bribe me or something. It says to put this code in the cheat menu. Alright, let's see what happens.
Hey, yo, Dr. Pepper! This guy got him some tennis! Hello, and welcome to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's episode on Dr. Muda. Let me know what you think about the episode in the comments down below. And, you know, like, subscribe, and all those things. And also, let me know what you want a diagnosis and games and games on in the comments down below as well. But, as always, my lovely patient, I thank you so much for watching, and tune in next time.